Thank you. Luke chapter 19 should serve as our text. I want to thank those of you that are in church today. I uh, just appreciate looking out and seeing your faces, knowing that God is up to something. Several weren't able to make it today, but you're here. And I believe God's got a blessing with your name on it. It's Children's Day, so the sermon might seem a little simple because I thought I was going to be preaching and children would be in here. But we're going to just be big kids today. Is that all right? all right? Good to see you, Pam. Good to see you. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. Luke chapter 19, he, verse 1, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through through it. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief collector of taxes and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree, Sister Mary. He wanted to see Jesus because Jesus was going to pass that way. And Brother Keith Lee, when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. And King James says, make haste. That's the way I learned it. For I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome him. Verse 7. All who saw it began to, what's your Bible say? Murmur. Somebody Bible say complain. What's another word? Murmur. Grumble. Murmur. Murmur, 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 grumble, 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 complain, complain, complain. And they said, he's gone to be the guest of one who's a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I'll give to the poor. And if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. And then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he too, say he too. He too. Say it again, please. He too. He too. He too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. We call this message today Lost but Still Loved. Lost but Still Loved. Recently, I was reading the newspaper and I found out that there was a gathering at Coachella. Coachella, the great big music festival that has some major celebrities participating. A lot goes on out there at Coachella. I was startled to find that there was a, a Sunday service. <laughs> Kanye was having Sunday service at Coachella. I was surprised, to say the least, that Sunday services were going down at Coachella and that Brother Kanye's name was going to be the headliner. Oh, there's been some strong criticism about what was happening. Some say that it was just a business venture because there were some articles for sale with some very heavy high price points, strong on margins, weak on the Messiah. I'm not here to criticize Mr. Kanye West, but I am here to say that I never would have thought that things would go down like they're going down right through here. Can you say amen? amen? I just don't think that back when I was listening to Prince, Biggie, 
Tupac, cameo, shake your pants, shake, 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 shake. I never thought the prince would be holding a church service. I just never thought. And I'm persuaded, sisters and brothers, brothers and sisters, that it's a good time for us to get back to the fundamentals. Can you say amen? I say it's a good time for us to focus on the fundamentals. Because it seems to me that there's a whole lot going on out here in the world. There's a whole lot of things that are causing many of us to scratch our heads and say, boy, I never thought it would go down like that. And again, I don't want to stand off in the distance and hurl stones of criticism and condemnation. That is not my task. My task is to lift up the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. amen. I think that if I lift up the name of Jesus and you lift up the name of Jesus and we lift up the name of Jesus, he sits high and he looks low. He's still on the throne. And somehow, some way, God is still working all things together for good to those that love him and are called according to his purposes. I just need to remind you today that there's a whole lot of folk that are lost but still loved by God. Can you say amen? And if we can focus on that, if we can focus on the core message of the gospel, and we'll be able to impact some lives. Can I ask you, where would you be were it not for the grace of God in your life? Maybe, just maybe, the reason why Mr. Kanye West was able to attract so much attention by saying we're going to have a Sunday service is because so many people realize that though they have it going on, there's still a lostness about many of us. We're loved of God, but we're still lost. So today I thought I would just spend a little time with the fundamentals of the faith because I find in this story some very interesting words that prove to be helpful. They'll be inspirational and instructive. Notice Luke says that Jesus is passing through Jericho. He's on a journey. And if you read the Bible, brothers and sisters, you'll find out that Jesus is on the move. Say, he's on the move. He's on the move. He's going here. He's going there. He's stopping in and seeing about folks. He does some blessings, and he moves to a next place. The text says he's getting, he's passing through, and behold, something happens. A crowd gathers, and in the crowd, one is singled out. His name is Zacchaeus. He's characterized by his occupation and he's known to be a rich man. The Bible says he's a publican, if you read it from the King James. He's a chief tax collector, if you see it from the more contemporary translation. The bottom line is, is that he was chosen to go into his community, extract funds from the people. He is collecting from the ones that are oppressing. He is collecting from the oppressed, and he is working for the oppressor. And so you can imagine that when people saw Zacchaeus, they went to school with Zacchaeus. They'd grown up with Zacchaeus. They saw him in the marketplace, and all of a sudden, he started wearing ice on all of his fingers. <laughs> can I say it like I feel it? He had to roll it with the ice all the way around the, the bezel and on the face. Amen. I just see him with some red bottom shoes on. <laughs> Can I say it like I'm feeling? I see him rolling all of a sudden. He turned in his Chrysler, amen, and got him a Bentley chariot. <laughs> he had the seat all leaned back. They said, Is that Zacchaeus? He's balling. Where did he get all that money from? Oh man, don't say it, but Zacchaeus is working for the Roman government. He's collecting taxes for the enemy. Oh no, really? Yeah, he is. You see how much money he's got? Well, you know how folks just shake their head and say, well, we don't want to deal with stuff. But the text says that Zacchaeus is characterized by being a chief tax collector and he's rich, but Jesus is passing by 
And interestingly, it says it's a crowd of people, and he's not a tall man. He, 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 he's short on height and long on money. And so he decides, I know what I'm going to do. I need to see him. I'll climb up the sycamore tree. Can you imagine? I just want to be like, you know, I'm in there, I'm looking. He, he getting ready, he see Jesus coming by. He looked down at his Gucci loafers. He said, I want to scratch up my Gucci loafers. But I'm going to climb the tree because I want to see Jesus. Can y'all just smile at me? Don't be frowning. I'm just trying to have a little fun today. So he climbs up the tree and there he's standing. He's there in a tree and Jesus passed by and looks at him. It must have been a fanciful scene. Jesus seen this rich man all blinged out up in a tree. What you doing? Come on down here, man. Make haste. Hurry up. Come down. And not only does he say come down, he says I want to go to your house. And that's when, say that's when. The church folks got the murmuring and grumbling and blah, blah, blah. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Something must have happened to Zacchaeus because all of a sudden there seems to be a change in his behavior. He says, listen, if I've defrauded anybody, I don't know if I'm going to pay them back, but I'll pay them back four times as much. And then Jesus makes a declaration. He too is a son of Abraham. The son of man didn't come, but to seek and to save that which is lost. So that is the story. And how can we learn the fundamentals of the faith from these 10 verses in Luke chapter 19? The first thing I want you to see is that Jesus is offering love to some of everybody. Can you say amen? Zacchaeus is characterized in such a way that anybody in the first century would say he's the worst kind of person. He's exploiting others. He's taking advantage of others. He's working for the enemy. He has gotten good, all the goods of life by taking from other people. Maybe that's why the text says that the folks were grumbling and murmuring and complaining because they didn't want to see God's love going to a guy like that. That's why I press time out today and say, hold up, wait a minute. The good news of Jesus Christ is that he is still extending love to those who are characterized as the worst among us. Can't you say amen? We're living in a day and time, sisters and brothers, where younger people are saying, I've made some mistakes and the church folk act like they don't want me around. Where people are saying, I made some mistakes and I don't feel comfortable around there. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For God committed his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Ah, you all know John 3.16. God so what? That he gave his that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have what? Everlasting life. And that whosoever is such a beautiful word. Whosoever you failed miserably. Whosoever you've fallen short. Whosoever you have done things that you're not proud of. Whosoever you said you weren't going to do it and you kept on doing it. Whosoever the love of God, the grace of God is amazing. So the gospel reminder today is that you can be lost and still loved by God. Can you say amen? amen. Do you know somebody? Is there somebody that you don't want to see at the family reunion? You know they're going to linger at the bar too long and act a plump fool. You know the one. You don't want to see them coming because they borrowed some money from you last year and they still haven't paid you back and they forgot. You know the one. But can I tell you something? Here's the good news. Jesus loved her too. Amen. And Jesus loves him too. Amen. I need you to know Zacchaeus is a reminder. He too can be loved of God. Not only is Jesus doing his part, but at a certain point, here's another fundamentals. We have to do our part. Let the church say amen. I love the fact that Jesus sees Zacchaeus 
and Zacchaeus is up in the tree. So at some point in Zacchaeus' life, he realized, I need something that I do not have. And so I will make my way to a place where I can get in the proximity of Jesus. I need to see him. And I need to tell somebody here today, if you are trying to help somebody get their lives together, make sure that they're doing their part because God is doing his part. Let the church say amen. amen. We have some responsibility in this as well. We have to seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is still near. God is saying, I have done my part. I have extended my love towards you. What will you do to say I want you in my life? Have you ever loved somebody that didn't love you? That's a jacked up situation. You're steady trying to prove your love to them. And they're just passing you by. I think that God's love is so awesome that we should be able to seek him too. Let the church say amen. amen. So fundamental number one, Jesus got love for the lost. Fundamental number two, let's do our part in showing our interest in the Lord. Fundamental number three, that when the Lord does interact with us, it is time for a change. Say it's time for a change. Come on, say it again. It's time for a change. Come on, say it one more time. It's time for a change. It's time for a change. Zacchaeus evidence it. He says, listen, if I've defrauded somebody, if I've done wrong, I'm getting ready to try to make that right. <laughs> now the problem is, sisters and brothers, sometimes we wrong folk, and they don't want anything to do with us anymore. Sometimes we don't get a chance to say to that person, I'm sorry. But guess who we should say I'm sorry to? God Almighty. Can you say amen? Let's make sure we're right with God. So the text shows us. We are the evidence that there has been a change. I think one of the most beautiful things that can happen is when somebody says, it looks like you, but it ain't the same you. Amen. Oh, what a change come over my life since Jesus came into my heart. We've got to get back to the fundamentals, sisters and brothers. Because the text says here, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. He's still loving us even when we're lost. On your way to church today, you saw some people who were broken. On your way to church today, you saw some people who were broken. You might have combed the hair of somebody who was still broken even though you loved the Lord. Jesus loves us. When we're lost. Luke 15 shows us that there was a coin that was in the house, but it was lost. And you could be in church and still in some kind of way lost. Amen. Not lost in terms of your relationship with the Lord, but lost in terms of your fellowship. So let's go back to the fundamentals. I'm going to tell a little story. It's kind of old fashioned, but I feel like telling it. Down south, there was a there was a fella that owned a nightclub, and business was very, very good. Uh, there were a lot of people that go Friday night, Saturday night, big old place. Music was good. People went and did what they did at nightclubs. In that same community was a good-sized church. They didn't do too much business during the week, but on Sundays, they were quite busy. Well, unfortunately, a fire broke out in the church and the church burned down. So they had to determine where they were gonna have church the following week. So they had an idea, well, the, church, the building that's big enough to accommodate us is the nightclub. So the week passed, 
when, you know, Friday, folks were getting their party on. Saturday, folks were getting their party on. One fellow went to the club Saturday night, and he was partying, and he lingered a little too long at the bar. And his cup runneth over. <laughs> so he went to find some cover because he didn't want to pass out. And they had these tables, and they had those skirts around them, so he just felt like if he could just rest himself for a little bit, he just got behind, you know, one of the tables, and nobody could see him, and he fell fast asleep, and nobody knew he was under there. The next morning, he was awakening, he was trying to shake off that Hennessy, Lord have mercy. He was trying to shake it, man. His head was bad, trying to clear his eyes. He heard some music. So he pulled up that skirt from under the table and he looked and he squinted. And he's trying to figure it out. He said, oh, same crowd, different music. <laughs> One of the reasons, brothers and sisters, is we're not making a good impact is because most pastors are saying no difference between the saints and the ain'ts. I stand convicted. I know God is calling us to get back to the fundamentals. There ought to be a way that you do business differently because you're a child of Jesus Christ. There ought to be a way that you treat folks that are different because you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. There ought to be a way that you carry out your responsibilities in your social gatherings because you have named the name of Jesus. So let's be fundamentally sound. Let's make sure that folks can tell we've been with Jesus. Let's clap our hands one more time for the Lord Jesus Christ.